Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I am super excited to teach you how to create this horizontally scrolling marquee of images on your Squarespace website. Now the code to create this is listed in the description below, but there are very specific parts of this code you're going to need to change. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here and I'll show you how this code works step by super simple step so you can set it up on your own Squarespace website. Let's get started. So here we are inside Squarespace. And if you scroll down, this is the effect that we're going to create today. And this is the code that we're going to use. Now, is it perfect? No. Is it customizable? Yes. And is it mobile friendly? Also, yes. To do this, we're actually using a gallery grid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hop into design, custom CSS. I'll remove this code so we can add it back together later. We'll select save. And now you can see what this section looks like before we add that code. If we hop into edit mode, I'll show you how I added this particular section that we're going to animate. Select add section, and over on the left-hand side, scroll down until you see images. I want you to click on images, and here, look for one that has this eye on the top right-hand side. That right there is an indicator of an auto layout, in this case, a gallery section. So again, add section, select images, and pick one with an eye on the side. Once you select one of those, I want you to select edit gallery, and this is where you can add your own images. Either click this plus sign to search the images already on your site or upload some new ones, but this is where you need to put those images and feel free to rearrange them just by dragging and dropping them into any order that you want them to be in. Again, we selected edit gallery, and this is where you add the images. Now, after that, we need to select edit section and make sure that we've set this up for grid simple. And then if you scroll down here, I want to add as many columns as I can. I also want you to notice the ratio here. These images have a different ratio than these on the bottom. Set up the aspect ratio that you want to make sure that your images are cropped in a way that fits them well. So we have one to one square, three to two standard, all of these fun things. Now, if you want to use images that are different sizes, simply upload them as a PNG. They need to be set with this aspect ratio in this particular type of gallery. They all have to be the same size for this layout. But if you want them to be different sizes, upload them as a PNG with a transparent background. Okay, we've got our images uploaded. We have it set to grid simple and we can see them all in a line. I'm going to go ahead and select save and let's animate both of these sections. Now scrolling down here, this is the code that we're going to use. This first part of the code says page overflow X hidden. When we set up the scrolling gallery, we're going to be pushing some of these images off to the right of the page. And I want to make sure that those are hidden so we don't have a bar on the bottom. I'll show you what the code looks like if we don't have that line, but I just want you to know why that's there and why it's important. This part right here creates the actual layout for the gallery, and this creates the animation. This is called a keyframe animation, and we named it slideshow. And you'll notice right here we've said slideshow 30 seconds linear infinite, meaning it's on a loop. So let's take this whole code right here, which is listed in the description below, and we'll navigate to design and select custom CSS. Now I'm gonna scroll back up on my page so you can see our gallery sections. I'll paste that code right here. And now we have two animated gallery sections. If we go to mobile, this is what they look like on mobile. And this is what it looks like on desktop, pretty awesome. Now again, we've said page overflow X. If I remove this line of code, look at the bottom of my screen. Do you see how we can actually scroll off the page because our gallery section is all the way off the page? That's why I want to make sure we say overflow X hidden. After that, we've said take this gallery grid wrapper and display it as flex. This allows us to create this animation. And after that, we said animation slideshow 30s linear infinite. Now, if you want it to go super slow, change 30 to 100. That's going to take 100 seconds from the very start of the slideshow all the way to the end. So that can make it crawl. Now, if you want it to go really fast, try like 10S. It'll take 10 seconds to complete the entire slideshow animation, which will go a lot faster. I thought 30 looked great for the number of pictures that I was actually using. But again, this is how you adjust the speed. Now, underneath that, this is where we've actually set the height of this particular section. If I change this min width to something like 30, that's actually going to make the picture smaller. If I change it to 10, they'll be a heck of a lot smaller. And in fact, it makes it a terrible animation. We'll talk about adjusting that in a minute. But let's say we set it to 30 and that looks great. Awesome. If you want it to be bigger, maybe adjust them to 70 and they'll be gigantic. Super customizable. Now, whatever you set it to, if you set this to a width, like maybe going back to that 30% example, you'll notice we get to the edge and it's all the way off the screen. 
That has to do with this very last aspect of the keyframe. In this slideshow, we said left negative 255%. That's negative 255% the width of this. So if I actually say negative 150%, for example, that's going to set the slideshow so it stops once it reaches 150% to the left, which might be great for a slightly smaller set of images. We can see here that's already a little too big. So maybe something closer to 110 would be ideal. And why don't we say 10 seconds so it goes by even faster and we can see how this changes it. There we go. Okay, 110 might be ideal for this one. So for the actual slideshow I've created, I thought 30 was great. And for the size that I was using, setting this to a min width of 50% for six photos, setting this to negative 225 was ideal. I want you to customize those to suit your own style. Again, changing up this left proportion when you adjust this minimum width. This minimum width is what changes the actual image size. Now, margin right is causing the space between them. We can adjust that as well, maybe 2% or maybe 20% if you want them to be spaced super far apart. That part is super customizable as well. And last but not least, this right here was the amount of seconds that it takes for the whole animation to take place. 30 seconds was a nice low speed. If you want to speed it up, make it something like 10 seconds and make it 100 seconds if you want to slow it down. That's what you need to adjust there. And don't forget at the very top, it says page overflow X hidden. Leave that there. We want to make sure that people can't scroll off of the page to the left or the right. Now, one last thing I wanted to teach you was how you can apply this to an individual section. Maybe you don't want both of these galleries to have that feature. I use a free Chrome extension, which I'll link in the description below. You click on this Chrome extension, you can grab the data section ID. Once you have that number, place that at the beginning before every instance of gallery grid wrapper. Now notice only the second gallery is animated. This top one is exactly the way that it was before, a static set of images right there on the page. So again, that's the data section ID. If you're isolating one individual section, place that before gallery grid wrapper in two different instances in our code. Once you've made all of the changes that you wanna see, select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. All of the codes that we just used are listed in the description below. Just make sure you change those important aspects of this particular code to suit the size of the image, the amount of images that you have, and how fast you want the scroll effect to happen on your own website. Alrighty, we'll call this tutorial a wrap. Thank you so much for watching, and I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and a comment, and definitely subscribe to my channel on YouTube because I post a brand new tutorial every single week, and I want to make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching, and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you like this tutorial, you're going to love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my custom codes and pro tips inside one gigantic PDF, available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.